we were just talking about how we, what would we say? How would we articulate Here our we viewpoints? <laughs> we attracted this. You realize? Yes. That, right? You put out the energy. Law of attraction. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, what, what's your names and what's brought you out? Alex. Ben. Alex and Ben. All right, Alex and Ben. So, what, uh, what are you guys doing here? I am here because I want to make a statement along with the rest of these people that you and I cannot afford a lobbyist. You and I cannot afford a high-powered lobbying firm in Washington to push our viewpoints. I cannot afford the $33,800 or whatever the amount is ticket to go see Obama or any of these other political candidates. Money is everything in our system and most of these 99% they just don't have a shot. Not a, sh not a I chance. I thought it was one person, one vote. You're telling me that's not how the system works? One person, one vote? Not democracy? at all. Not at all. Because at the end of the day, my vote is being determined by the media, by companies, by advertising agencies that are putting together a campaign that is completely based in what any particular, the most well-funded particular candidate agenda, whatever their agenda is. So at the end of the day, my vote is dictated by what I see on TV, by what I see in the newspapers, by what I read in the magazines, and that is all funded by whoever has the biggest campaign chest. I get the sense you're not happy with that system. No, not at all. What's the matter with it? A lot of people made a lot of money with that system. The people who made a lot of money with that system are the very people who are funding that system. And if you look at the statistics, the vast majority of the wealth in this country, well I should say, the wealth gap between the 99% and the 1% of incomes has never been wider in decades. And when such a small concentration of Americans control such a large percentage of the wealth, inevitably people don't have jobs, can't pay back their student debt, because they don't even have access to the system that is supposed to be the American dream. Well How about you? What your thoughts? Uh, what you say ditto? I can say ditto, <laughs> but uh, you know, I would say I'm, I'm a, got a jobs focus. I think we need to have our politicians understand that there's a group of Americans that expect them to invest in the country, and we need that investment to get everyone back on track, be it the folks that are unemployed, and even the big corporate guys that aren't hiring, aren't producing, and aren't manufacturing because there's not demand out there. So until we get that demand created, and the only way to do that right now is going to be government, community investment. It's not going to come from somebody deciding to hire and employ people for the, from the good of their heart. Because if there's no one to consume, there's not going to be anything worth producing. So I think what I see this as a great message as is to alert politicians that we want sensible American reinvestment plans, we want infrastructure projects, we want uh, debt forgiveness for student loans and for uh, mortgages and to give people a chance to get back on their feet so that the whole country can lift itself back up. Have you guys been at the Occupy LA movement uh, before today, or was today your first your first appearance there? First day for me. Yeah. I'll too. And what do you what do you think of it? How do you, how does it feel being out here in the street? It feels fantastic. I mean, it. You know, I wish there was more people. I think we get more media attention. Um, no offense. <laughs> but uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, you you do the best with what you have. I think part of the problem is there's not enough of a messaging uh, mechanism that this movement is, is lacking. I don't think people quite understand that it's not just some fringe movement. That if you look around, you see people with signs saying, I'm a single dad, I cannot afford, you know, I've never been late in a bill payment, but I can't afford to, to pay my son's education or to, to pay back my student loan debt. It, this is this this is mainstream right here, but unfortunately, I don't think that's being communicated. That yeah, it's not being communicated in the mainstream press. Does it look like a fringy? You know, absolutely, hippie? absolutely. Just yesterday, absolutely. Just yesterday, I was looking at a, uh, uh, I believe it was a KCBS broadcast television story that was posted online, talking about some guy who was, you know, calling Gandhi a tumor, or, or, or making some anti-Semitic comments, and that is that is one guy out of, you know. At any point, thousands, thousands of people who are part of this movement 
who have don't in the least agree with that viewpoint. Are, and, it, and, and, and that's the problem. The media likes to focus on the extremists because it makes a good story, makes good television, it gets eyeballs, which pays for the advertising. You see, that's the problem. And in a way, it reinforces the image that the, the folks buying the advertising might want the public absolutely, to have. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, it's a fringe. Don't get involved. Don't, don't get off your couch. Yeah. At the end of the day, if we're going to make everything, whether it's our health care, our education system, about profit, about making money, about the bottom line, inevitably, Inevitably, we're going to lose sight of the human soul. We're going to lose sight of the, of the human quotient in the equation. It, it, you, at the end of the day, we have to take care of our own. We have to take care of people. If it's all about how much money I can make today, forget, forget everybody else. I mean, of course you're going to forget everybody else. That's the nature of Wall Street, isn't it? Hedge funds, hedge funds made. So, you know who came out on top of the, of, the, of the Wall Street disaster? Hedge funds. They were betting against. They were betting against. They were basically against America. Be betting against America, betting for the fact that yes, everything would collapse, and it did, and they made millions. So if that's what's going on, if that's if that's what a lot of these I hate to say it, but if I, I but the sense is my sense is that a lot of these Ivy League schools are producing, you know, extremely talented and educated people who go straight to Wall Street, who go straight to these big law firms protecting Wall Street. We're losing all this talent and brain power for what? So I can own a Maserati? And the fascinating thing is, all these people who end up in their 60s and 70s making all this cash, they all of a sudden wake up and they say, oh, this is not what I wanted my life to be about. So they give it all away. <laughs> but it's too little too late. It's got to start. It's got to start from the fundamental problem that I think is this system, and that is money controls our policymakers. And if policy, if public policy is what's supposed to protect the public, how can any of these people here, any of these people here, get out from under the bus, get out from under the student debt, get out from under their, you know, their, their house that they're underwater on? How, how, how is it possible? So in a way, if the, the system, the, the greed inherent in the system can become so overwhelming that the system itself collapses. That's exactly what I think is going itself. on. If there aren't enough of us to provide the demand, to, to become educated, eventually it's all going to break. So in a way, the rich need to be safe from themselves. Yes. <laughs> Everyone needs to say so. Yes. You know, there's... I can't, I can't build a road by myself. I can't install a sewer system. You know, but as a team, you can. So it feels like some of that team spirit's gone out of politics lately. So true. And I'm ready for folks to pay a little bit more attention to. Seems to be a big team uh, on the field today. Hey, you know, it's a start. I hope they all vote in November and at every other election.